Hello my friends and welcome back to Holistic Living Down Under. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in that I'm going to be showing you how to make a basic bread roll recipe in your own kitchen. It's so hard to get the essentials at the shops at the moment so I thought a simple bread recipe is something everyone should know. So let's get started. So we're going to start by adding some lukewarm water to our bowl and you can do this in a regular bowl at home. I'm using about 360 grams of water or 360 mils so that is nearly a cup and a half. I'm also going to be adding in two teaspoons of dry instant yeast. This is about the same amount as you will get in one sachet as well, so you can use those if you want to as well. I keep my yeast in my freezer to keep it fresh for longer and just take it out and warm it up as needed. I'm just going to add the lid on and let this stir for a couple of minutes. In a regular bowl you will just leave it sitting on the kitchen bench. Okay, it is time to start adding our flour. I use baker's flour, which is sometimes also called strong flour. And the reason I use that is that it helps give the really soft, fluffy texture to our bread rolls or our bread. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use about 550 grams, which is just over a pound. And we're going to add a few other bits and pieces as well. If we're not adding seeds and grains, which I'm going to add in a second, you can take the flour up to about 600 grams. I'm going to add in about 100 grams of mixed grains and seeds. This is just to give a little bit of extra texture to our bread rolls. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm also going to add in just over two tablespoons of um, organic olive oil. It's about 40 grams and it just helps make the dough really nice and smooth to work with. I'm also going to add in one teaspoon of Himalayan salt. I forgot to put this out on the bench before but I'm going to add in two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar and this actually helps um, work as a bit of a bread improver and it makes the dough really nice and fluffy. It is time to start mixing our ingredients together. I'm just going to do this quickly in my thermomix. If you're doing it on a, in a regular bowl um, on your kitchen bench, just use a spoon just to stir the ingredients together. It is time to start kneading. Now I'm going to show you why this machine is incredible because I'm going to set it to about seven minutes of kneading and it's going to do it all for me. It's actually got a little interval speed that does a bit of a stopping and starting and turning of the blades, which makes for really nice kneading. If you want to do this um, just normally with your hands, just doing it on your normal bench top, but you're going to have to knead it for at least 15 to 20 minutes if you're doing it by hand. Of course, you can also do this in a bread machine or you can use a KitchenAid type mixer as well. But if you look at how beautiful my dough has turned out just by doing seven minutes in this, this machine, the longer you knead as well, the better the, uh, the dough is going to get and more smoother the result. So I'm going to place my dough onto my silicon mat. Um, I'm going to just fold it into a nice bowl. And, um, to just set it to rest for a little while. So I'm going to add some olive oil to my hands. It just helps it from keep it from sticking to my hands. I try to resist the temptation of using a whole lot more flour because whatever flour you now add to the dough hasn't really been kneaded in. So it's going to make the dough tougher. So just by using a bit of oil, it's going to be really easy to work with. So I'm just folding the dough in on itself, as you can see, and just creating a really smooth surface. 
So I'm just going to lay the dough down on a little bit of flour just to keep it from sticking. And I'm just going to wrap it up in my silicone mat. This is just going to keep it insulated and it can sit here and rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, my dough has now been rested for about 20 minutes. Now I am in Australia and it is a hot climate here. So if you're in a cooler climate, you might need to leave it for a little bit longer. But you can see my dough has risen quite well. It is now time to give it a little light knead just to knock the air out of it. You don't have to hammer it, just lightly knead it. And we are going to then roll it out into uh, little rolls. I'm going to divide this mixture into 12 and um, that's going to be enough for the next couple of days for us. Now because I'm working on a silicone mat I don't want to cut it with a knife so I'm just going to use a spatula for my cutting today. So I'm going to cut each piece into halves and then I'm going to cut those little little pieces in threes. So you can if you want you can weigh your bread rolls uh, and divide it by 12 or weigh your whole dough and then divide it by 12 um, I'm just going to do it by eye measure so you'll see me add little bits of dough to some of the rolls and take from some of the other ones uh, but I've done this quite a few times before so I'm used to how big they're going to look Okay, it's time to start rolling my dough and because I've got so many I'm just going to start doing the first few in my hand and what I do is I flatten them slightly to so give it a little bit of a push and then start rolling it by cupping my hand slightly. So I'm just going to do that a few times and then I'm going to start working on the bench in a little bit. see I'll do exactly the same on my bench I'll flatten it a little bit with my hand just putting a bit of pressure on it and then I'll start rolling it and then slowly start cupping my hand around the, the little bread roll it just makes a really nice smooth surface and it actually helps with the rising of the bread rolls as well giving a really nice smooth result rolled and ready to go so I'm going to cover them up and I'm going to let them rise now for a little while it will depend on how hot your house is but I'm just going to wait until they're about double in size hopefully it won't take too long so for me it took about I think it was about 30 to 40 minutes before I got to this stage it might take you up to an hour to get them this this nice and big I'm going to add a little bit of water to my hands and just add to the top of the bread rolls and this will just prevent them from drying out in the oven so we're going to add them into about 180 to 200 degree oven and we are going to use just the normal uh, over and under sort of baking setting on our oven I haven't added fan force yet but I might just add a little bit towards the end just because I don't want them drying out too much I'm also adding a little cup of water down the bottom and that will just help give a bit of steam in the oven it's going to give you a nice crust so I'm going to have them in here for about 20 minutes and we'll see what happens it's been 20 minutes and these bread rolls are looking gorgeous I added for the last five minutes I did put it onto fan forced just to give a little bit of crispness at the end and it worked a treat so they're nice and golden and they are absolutely beautiful and ready to go so what do you think okay I'm going to have a little taste taste test here you guys know that I don't eat a lot of grains or carbs at all but seriously who can resist nice fresh 
hot bread rolls straight out of the oven. This roll was actually so hot I had to use an oven mitt to hold it, but hey, it's going to taste so much better. So I'm going to add a little bit of butter to it. I'm just going to leave it sitting on there a little for a little bit and just to melt, and then I can easily spread it into this gorgeous bread roll. taste test let's see how this is mm, absolutely delicious and I can't wait for you guys to try it thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope it gave you some ideas if you enjoyed it please leave it a thumbs up share it out with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you again next time